While Saitama battled with Boros, in the meantime on Earth, the other heroes were working to evacuate City A. Both Carol and Monica were both flying in the air, using their powers to the full with the various flying vessels of the Armada that were attacking. Genos and Kamala would be on the ground with the other S-Class and A-Class heroes fighting against the ground troopers. Of course, you had the likes of eight other S-Class heroes, like Tatsumaki and Bang, who were also assisting in the fight. But for Kamala, she was worried. It had been a while since Genos had returned, and Master Saitama hadn't. The fight that originally started on the mothership had now moved to the moon, and when you looked up to the sky itself for brief moments, you could see various sparks and flashes on its surface. She knew that had to be Saitama, but still, who could be pushing him to actually fight on that level? Most of his battles never lasted before a few brief moments, a minute or two at most. Had he actually found someone that could push him? Someone that was truly worthy of rivaling him? Genos could see the worry on Kamala's face, and of course, he couldn't help but feel the same. His master had told him to leave, that he'd be able to take care of Boros. But still, the fact that Boros had lasted this long, it meant that he wasn't like any enemy that they had ever faced before. If it was taking Master Saitama this long to secure the victory, perhaps he had truly met his match. But still, even with his concern, he could not let that show now. Not now. I know what you're thinking, Kamala, Genos yelled out to her. You're worried about Master Saitama, but you must have faith. He will be victorious. But what's taking him so long? You know how Saitama is. He's incredibly strong, stronger than anyone. And yet, I know, when he sent me on ahead, he had a smile on his face. I wasn't quite sure of what to make of it at first. The way that he smiled, it was as if he had found something that he had been searching for for a long time. As if he had finally found a reason. A reason to what? As if he'd found a reason to live. Master Saitama is a lot of things, but to say that he goes through life with some measure of joy is an understatement. His power, his strength, it robbed him of almost all his emotions. Because he was the strongest. Because no one could rival him, no one could challenge him. It robbed him of any thrill. But now that feeling has returned, that spark. Ever since I became a cyborg, I've always had to think logical. Even so, I have sometimes find Master Saitama's thinking to be highly illogical. To have the level of strength that he has, to have the security of victory in hand, to know that you can end a fight in just a single punch. Genos would get into the flow of battle as he performed a double axe kick on one of the alien foot soldiers before shooting away another horde. Logically speaking, you should be happy. You should be thrilled. Thrilled at being able to end any fight with absolute force and dominance. And yet. And yet what? Kamala would ask. Genos said nothing. And yet what, Genos? And yet it's entirely boring. Geno said as he continued on fighting. It's illogical, but at the same time, it's thrilling to go into a battle, not knowing who's going to win, knowing that you have to give your very best and that your opponent has to do the same. It's thrilling. It's beyond all words and recognition. It's beyond all logic and comprehension. The idea of wanting to fight someone who could potentially beat you. But then again, why do we do any of the things that we do? There's always the possibility of failure. There's always the chance that you won't succeed. 
But do we stop living? Do we stop trying? Do we stop striving? That's what Master Saitama was robbed of with his strength. He was robbed of the ability to grow, the ability to change, to just stagger on, to reach the pinnacle, to reach the absolute height of your ability and to find that there's no one on that level that can match you. No one that can push you further. It's like climbing a mountain, a mountain that no one's ever climbed before, but you find yourself at the very top. What's worse, you find that after all those years, no one has been able to match you. No one's been able to reach the top with you. There's no other mountain. There's no other place to go. There's no rival, nothing to push you forward. Master Saitama was robbed of that. And that is why, in this moment, he is truly happy. Because now the spark that wanted him to be a hero, that spark has returned. Boros might be strong, but I have faith. Faith that Master Saitama will be stronger. Because he is the strongest hero in the world. Saitama and Boros will continue their battle on the moon. Boros had been creating a carving, a masterpiece, if you will. On the surface of the moon, he carved and shaped Saitama right into it. As Saitama stood once again, Boros would be right on top of him, punching him into the ground once more. Saitama dodged just barely as Boros was back on him once again. This is my true power. And yet you have been able to match me. You truly exceed my expectations, Saitama. Or should I say, Captain Marvel too? You're not bad yourself. Saitama would counter, knocking back Boros once again, as now he went on the offensive. All right, let's see how much you can take this. Consecutive punches! Saitama would throw out a series of consecutive punches in a row, and Boros swatted away every single one of them, before backhanding Saitama across the surface of the moon once again. Yes, this is what I wanted. This is what I've dreamed of. To meet someone like you, someone of your caliber, someone who can fight on my level. You and I... We are neither hero nor villain. We have grown beyond such meager labels. We have grown into our own echelon of power. You and I, we are like storms. Monsters of nature. Forces that cannot be measured, contained, or controlled. That is what I desire to be. More than anything else in this world, I desire to become nothing but a complete and utter element of destruction. I will become the harbinger, the being that brings nothing but absolute. That is where I live in. That is where you and I thrive. We can't be bound by such petty morality, right and wrong. That doesn't apply to us. Does right and wrong apply to a hurricane? Does it apply to a storm that destroys and leaves nothing in its wake? What government can hold a natural disaster accountable? What government has the strength to? Who has that right? You and I are the exceptions to the rule, Saitama. Don't you see? We've grown far beyond the petty notions that mankind speaks of, that the universe uses to govern itself. There are many powerful beings in the universe, many powerful entities that all exist. They become so high in fact that the only thing that governs them is law and power. The law that dictates that the power must only go to the strong. There are beings like death, like eternity. But even they cannot stay on their perch. For if someone were to grow in strength, rise to challenge and take away that title, 
it would be theirs to claim. Eternity does not exist. Eternity is not everlasting. Eternity is only but one being. One being that has the power to hold such a name. That is what I aim to be. I aim to grow beyond just the petty realities that we live in. I will grow beyond time, beyond space, beyond the soul, beyond power, beyond reality, and beyond space. I will grow beyond life and death. I will seek out eternity. I will reach to the point where I stand on par with the one above all and the one below. I will make both the light and the dark bow to my whim. Saitama, don't you feel it? You're calling. You're calling to go beyond, beyond your mere mortal body, beyond the limits that you have been shackled with since the day that you were born. Let us take that step together to go beyond even the power of gods, the power of all conception. This can be our beginning. This can be where we take that step. Now, let us begin at the ground level and work our way to the top. Only the mighty can live. Only the strongest survive. That is the one true law of all reality that all beings must face. That is the one law that we must all adhere to from the day we are born to the day we die. Only the strongest, only those who have the power to claim it, they are the chosen few who will live far beyond the end of all space, time, and reality. And you are my stepping stone, Saitama. You are my stepping stone on that quest. So, with all due respect, hero for fun, this is where you die! Boros would charge towards Saitama once again, unleashing the full volley of his power. Saitama taking every hit that Boros could dish out. He thought about his words, about that preamble, that speech. Normally, he didn't care too much about what villains had to say. Everyone had a monologue, everyone had their reasons. Everyone was their own special individual in their own universe. These are my plans for domination. These are my plans to take over the world. These are my plans to reach heights beyond God. But, but for some reason, Boros' words spoke to Saitama. Why do what you do? Why seek this kind of strength? Why try to get stronger? Is it greed? Is it hubris? Is that the reason? Deep down, are you truly not satisfied with just the power that you gain along the way? They say that absolute power corrupts absolutely. So what's a hero to do if they gain absolute power? Was he right? Was this just what Saitama wanted? Would he be satisfied if he met someone who could legitimately challenge him? He wouldn't know. Because he hadn't met that person yet. As Saitama got back on his feet, walking through a cloud of dust, he looked to Boros. I can't say that you're wrong. Truthfully, I've had this power. Ever since I've had it, I've never once known what it's like to experience defeat. No one has ever made me take the knee, and these fists have never touched the ground. I'm not sure what I want to be the strongest in all reality, the strongest in the universe, stronger than eternity. I truly have no idea what level I'm on, but 
I can say that your words have touched me. Because at the very least, I want to keep finding. I want to keep searching. I want to keep seeking out strong opponents. I don't know what will happen to me the day I lose. The day I suffer defeat. But maybe that's what I want to experience. I want to find someone who can beat me. Someone who can stop me. But until that day comes, I'll keep moving forward. I'll keep being a hero. Because there's no other way. If we are nothing but natural disasters, natural disasters with no real rhyme or reason, then I can only continue as being a hero of disaster. A hero of chaos. That is what I represent. That is what I choose to be. A hero of chaos. You contradict yourself, Saitama. A hero cannot be chaos. A hero cannot be a disaster. Two things that cannot coexist. It's simply impossible. Then let me be the embodiment of the impossible. I am the impossible given form. That is what I am. Prepare yourself, Boros. This is my serious punch. Saitama would launch the serious punch. And in one attack, Boros was defeated. He lied in a crater. The inevitability wishing upon him. That was Saitama's true power. No, that wasn't his true power. That was only a small taste of his true power. Saitama knelt in the crater as he descended down beside Boros. You were holding back the whole time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that you were trying to go all out against me. You were giving this fight your all. And I'm thankful. No. I think I am sorry. For a while, I thought that no one understood how I felt. No one knew the burden that I bore with my power. But I see now, you and I were in two completely different existences. When I thought that no one could connect to me, I come to realize I could never reach you. May we meet again, Saitama. Boros' body would disintegrate and fade away. And with that, Saitama would make his way back home to Earth. With most of the fighting now brought to an end. The alien armada was defeated and the day was saved. Well, there was Genos who had his arms ripped apart again. He got into a bit of a scuffle with Tatsumaki. Called her a spoiled brat. And well, she mangled him into pieces. Safe to say, with the defeat of Boros... Saitama's efforts would not go unnoticed. No, not at all. The hero community, everyone was taking note. Of course, there were still those who had their misgivings. But at the same time, Saitama was starting to become a force. A force of nature in the world that could not be ignored any longer. After all of the fighting and the defeat of the army of the aliens once again, the Hero Association would meet for a rebuild, rebuilding of the city, and making it a hero city and a refuge for Class A and Class B heroes to reside in. 
At the same time, there were various press conferences and forms of media, with the heroes giving their thoughts and experiences on the action. Saitama was even being called in to speak, although it wasn't really his sort of thing. He wasn't really the type of person to do media. So you can imagine his surprise when the announcement that Saitama was now being moved up to B class number 75. Saitama made his way to the podium, dressed in his normal hero attire. Saitama! Saitama! Here, Mr. Saitama! You're Captain Marvel 2, right? Such an odd choice in name, don't you think? Why a Captain Marvel 2? Uh, because there was a Captain Marvel 1? Uh, next question. Yes, so how did you gain your massive strength? I did 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and I ran a 10K run every day for three years. Uh, next question. Boxers or briefs? Uh, boxers. Mr. Clean or Mr. Oxyside? Uh, I would prefer Mr. Clean. Mr. Oxyside is, uh, a rather tame choice. Do you prefer ramen or udon? I prefer a good bowl of ramen, sir. The questions would go on and on and on again. Before finally there would be closing remarks. Sir, what exactly are your goals and your plans? What is your aim in the future? Hmm. Well, I can't really say that I'm 100% sure myself. In all truth, I'm just a hero for fun. I say that a lot, but in all honesty, I, I don't know myself. I don't know what the future holds for me, but I guess the truth is, I am Captain Marvel 2. With that, Saitama would leave the podium as more questions were flung his way. He was tired and ready to go home. As he left the building, he saw Tatsumaki looking at him with a deathly stare. She was a problem that obviously wasn't going away anytime soon. Before long, Saitama would finally make it home. He was going to be going out for dinner with his friends. Kamala, Genos, Carol, Monica, they had already left. Now all he had to do was change clothes. The lights were off in the apartment, although it wasn't a big deal. But as he went to flip a switch, there was a man standing in the middle of his apartment. A man dressed in black with an eye patch over his left eye. I am Captain Marvel 2. Who the hell are you? You wonder that, don't you? As if gamma radiation, radioactive bug bites, gods from another planet... Spoiled rich people that don't like to share with others. And on top of all that, I have to deal with the rather ordinary guy who's just a hero for fun. Okay, that doesn't answer my question. Who the hell are you? My name is Nick Fury. Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Never heard of it. You never will. We're not part of the Hero Association, Mr. Saitama. We work outside the lines, if you catch my drift. And I have been keeping my eye on you for a long time. Okay, what's this about? What do you want? I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, mind if we talk outside? Whatever. As Fury walked outside of the door, and there's one more thing. I want to talk to you about the... No, this... 
I know this. I know that this Mr. Clean, bald headed mother f just shut the damn door on me. Sorry, Tama. You, you. Okay. Okay. All right. You want to play like this? I got my eye on you. Fury reached for his phone as it rung at his side. Go for Fury. He did what? It. And where is Agent Coulson at now? How soon can I be there? I'm on the first flight. What do you mean you shut the door on Nick Fury? Carol said, looking across the dinner table at Saitama. What? Is he like a big deal or something? And then, you don't shut the... Oh my God. Carol, please call him. I'm already on it. Carol said to Monica as she was pulling out her phone. Hi. Y yes, I'm aware. And I'm he's not aware about these type of things, Fury. Please don't take it the wrong way. I know. Situation in the desert. Colson did what? Uh, uh, okay, keep me posted. Right, bye. Oh, God, you don't do that, Saitama, Monica said to him. As if the situation wasn't already stressful enough, there was another commotion going on outside. There was a man, a young man, with white hair, who was naked. Where are you? Show yourself, Saitama! Yo, I'm right here at... Oh, God, put some clothes on! Genos, I'm on it. Wait, no, don't pull your own pants off! The... Here! Saitama would just throw his pants at the young man, now standing out in the street in his underwear. The... What the hell? What do you want? Why are you calling me? You forget who I am, the young man said. Forget who you are. I don't know you. I am the being of chaos. The harbinger of destruction. The force that cannot be. Okay, enough with the damn preamble. Who are you? I'm Boros. Boros? The alien you fought? Kamala said. It's kind of good looking. No, no, we're not doing this. Hell no. First off, why are you not an alien? Why do you look like a human? Why the hell are you here? Boros got on his hands and knees and bowed. Make me your disciple. Huh? Another one? Carol said. N no, not another. I... <sighs> Why exactly do you want to be Master Saitama's disciple? Kamala asked. You trying to be a hero too? No, I do not want you to be a hero. I want to become strong enough so that I can defeat him. Well, it looks like you found another one, Carol said to Saitama. The bald-headed hero, standing in the street in his underwear, simply rolled his eyes. For a guy that just wanted to be a hero for fun, and for a guy that just wanted to live as ordinary of a life as possible and fight some strong people along the way, well, it was obvious that that goal would be rather easier said than done. Because now in one way or another, his life would never be the same. This is the story of Saitama, Captain Marvel, two, by the way, of a man who simply wanted to be a hero, but became far too powerful. Now, his leisurely days of being a hero for fun have long since passed him, as now powerful beings from Earth and across the stars will converge at his doorsteps looking for the fight of their lives.
This concludes One Punch Man Cosmic Crusader. What if Saitama was Captain Marvel? Season 1, Part 8, the Season 1 Finale. Like I always do when we get to a season finale, series finale, I want to take the time to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who has followed along with this story from beginning to end. It's one of those things that came together at the last minute, and I'll be entirely honest, I didn't think you guys were going to like it that much. Didn't know if there was really going to be an audience for a story like this. But I've really had a lot of fun writing this series, and I can't wait to do seasons two and with the upcoming announcement of season three of one punch man this story is definitely going to be going into the far reaches of the verse this story i want it to kind of be like my version of invincible focusing on the cosmic side of the marvel universe the larger scope the larger than life villains and characters of the cosmic marvel universe as a whole just across the whole spectrum a lot of awesome fights awesome characters everything that's going to be coming along with this series as we delve into the mythos that is the captain marvel legacy through the medium of one punch man but again thank you all like i always say can't do it without you you make the channel grow you make the core grow so that's going to do it for the end of today's video Thank you all for watching One Punch Man Cosmic Crusader Season 1 Part 8 Season 1 Finale. But I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcasting signing off, and I'll see you next time.